Welcome, welcome. Welcome to another practice. So we're actually going to begin standing today. And so we're going to get into mountain pose, but I'm going to go to the top of my mat. Feet about hip, hip width apart. Making sure my toes are grounded, my heels are on the ground. Then we're going to move up the body and start to really neutralize our, our pelvis, not making that arch up too much or too forward, but having it neutral, stacking our ribs and our shoulders, and then hands down by our side, mountain pose or the down side. Share mind up breaks. You need a break to yourself, to your body, and then up. The deep inhale. Bring your hands up above your head. Extend in mountain pose, fingers, palms facing each other, pinkies out. Breathe and then exhale, swan dive forward fold. Bending at the the knee, right to it. Increase the intensity of this forward fold. You can always straighten your legs a little bit more, really getting that hamstring stretch. Um, today I have blocks with me, so if you want to bring the ground closer to you, you can by all means use blocks or a blanket or whatever to make stretch feel better in your body. Maybe I challenge you to alternate between straight and bent knee. Really intensifying that stretch here. Okay, and you can also do a rag doll, really warming up those legs as we're going to be doing some hip opener. Elbows to hands, opposite elbows, and hanging like a rag doll. Ooh. Right? Once you feel that, Put your hands on your shin and lift up into a half lift, right? Really thinking as a flat back, elongating your torso, engaging all parts of your front and back body. Place your hands back down on the mat or your block, whatever comfortable for you. And use your left leg and step back, not too far as you are now in pyramid pose. Really, again, forward folding, adding your chest to thigh, and knees to nose as much as possible as you really stretch that back left hamstring. Okay. And hold it for three breaths for three, two, and one. Now with that same back leg, you're gonna actually go on your knees and get down, and now you are into low lunge. And if Want to deepen that low lunge by kind of bringing that back leg further and really sitting into this low lunge, making sure your knees over your wrist. Ooh, your hand. Okay. Sinking in here, breathing in so that you get that stretch. Trying to neutralize or center your hips so you're not swaying one way or the other. Holding this for three, two, one. I invite you to. If you want to hold this a little bit longer, you kind of want to challenge yourself by trying to lift up that back leg. So lifting up that back um, front of your foot and shin off the ground. Breathing in and holding this for three. Breathing into those areas two. And I, if you can reach it, by all means, you can try that. One, zero, let go, and place your hands back down on the mat. Now you're going to walk your hands backwards and shifting your hips as you get into a half split. Um, I challenge you to have your foot flex, right? Again, bring your chest to thigh. And if this is a too intense stretch, you can always bend your knees slightly to reduce that. 
breathe in here again. Really feel it right here. Three. up and see if you can actually lift up or bend that back leg and go right back into that pyramid pose right so hopefully those stretches warmed you up a bit for those poses and so you're going to bring that left leg back up into that forward fold again really releasing bending the knees to help to deepen that stretch and maybe placing your hands on your shins and see if you can stretch, straighten up those legs and get that intense stretch. Ooh. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So placing that right leg back into the pyramid pose. And then we're going to hold that for three. Two, the object is for both toes to be facing forward. Right side, like if you were stepping, so you can see that pyramid triangle here. And one. Again, we're going to bend that back leg and bend the front leg into a low lunge. And then we scoot it back a little bit. We're able to get that intense stretch right here and holding it for three, two, and one. And if this, if you fill up with the challenge, you can lift up that back leg and holding that for three. Two and one. If you want to try grabbing it, you can. Steady here. Placing your hands back down, walking back, and lifting up that front leg into a half split. Chest to thigh and knee to nose if possible. Great, so let's lift that back up, lift back into that pyramid pose, and then bring that foot right back up into forward fold. All right, so now we're gonna place our hands, I'm gonna move my block down on the ground, and we're gonna step into plank. So stepping our back leg, our right and back, tucking or stacking, I should say, our wrist over our shoulders, really opening up these fingers. If this may be too intense, you can always have a modifier when you're on your knees, but still having that diagonal. Right, so shifting into this plank pose, all right, and holding that. And then lifting your butts up and back and getting into downward dog. All right, downward dog, having that space in between your neck and your shoulders. The idea is to have your heels touch the mat. If that's possible, of course, you can have your toe, I mean, your knee bent or straight. And you can walk this dog. All right, so we're gonna lift up this right leg. Three-legged dog, we're actually gonna bring our shins forward, right? So making our shins parallel to the front of the mat as we get into pigeon pose, right? And so the back leg is going to be, all of it's gonna be down, the front of the back leg is gonna be down as if you were kind of doing a split. But the front is going to be ideally in this pigeon pose and having your shins parallel. If it's not, that's fine, you know, what feels good in your body. Pigeon pose is my hardest pose. That's why I do it every practice as much as possible. Making, um, ideally to have your knee on the outside, right? Kind of like sticking out so that you can really get that space. And so this pose is a bit challenging, right, to sit in. Is a very intense hip opener, right? So if you kind of want that extra support, what you can do is use your block and put it right underneath the booty of the leg being bent. So that you can kind of have your butt something to sit on and not just floating with gravity. Right? Okay, there you go. And so the idea is for you to sit in this pose, right? Not leaning to one side or the other, but really sitting in this pose and trying to have your hips as open as possible, right? So once again, having neutral forward hips and really sit in this pose for three, two, and one. And 
So you can stay here. If I challenge you to maybe do a sleeping pigeon, you're putting your forearm on the mat, kind of resting your back as if you were laying in the coach pose. And just keep this and intensify the stretch if you have that challenge. And so we'll hold this for three. Two. Maybe releasing the rhythm to gravity in this pose. It may be an uncomfortable sensation, but as long as it's not painful. And one, so safely walk yourself back up. Right? Maybe tuck, untuck those back toes, lift up, and bring that front leg back, back into your downward dog, and walk that out. Walk it out. Black will remember now. Okay, great, we can do the same on the left. So lift up that left leg into a three-legged dog and place it up forward. Once again, having that shin parallel. And just notice that one part of your body may be a bit different than the other. Our body are not symmetrical. They are not equally the same length, strength, flexibility, mobility. But if you're aware of that, it doesn't make it better or worse. It's just, it is what it is. Again, putting that block right here to kind of alleviate and help that floating booty. Right? And so again, having that split. So my left thigh is tighter. Much tighter. Alright, and so we're going to hold this. Sitting in it, three, two, and one. If you want to challenge yourself and get that tense stretch, then you can put your forearm down and get to the sleeping pigeon and hold this for three, two, So hold this for like 30 more seconds. All right, one more breath because my left side is tight. All right, and so safely get up, and tuck those toes, bring it back into your downward dog. And once again, pedal that out. Now that we're already in this downward dog, we're gonna lift up our back leg again into that three-legged dog, right? And now we're gonna place our step, walk, whatever is comfortable for you, that right leg on the outside of our hands, right, right on the edge of our mat. And then placing that back knee down. And so we're gonna get into like a wide, low lunge, or a lizard pose, right? So this lizard pose is the same, um, similar to this position before. Right, but it's a bit wider, opening up these hips a little bit more. And so, of course, you can stay here and have it here. You can kind of feel that intensity already. Or, again, if you want to deepen it, um, I don't think it's called sleeping lizard, but sure. Placing your forearm arms down and really just sinking and releasing in this pose. And hold it three, two, and one and release that. So step back up, bringing that back, that front knee, it's actually into a tabletop, right? And then going back up into your three legged, I mean, into your downward dog. And just walking that out. Okay, now do the same on your left. So lifting up that left, stepping it out on the outer side, placing down that right leg, knee, and into your lizard pose. Ooh, holding this for three. Two. And one. Yes, yeah, so four arms down for me. My left side is tight, so I'm unable right now to bring down my left forearm. I'm doing a half sleep. And just holding this for three. Two. And one. 
back into that tabletop and then lifting your butt up and back into that downward dog. Okay. So hopefully you're kind of feeling that heat. You're feeling that sensation, those stretches in your hips, right, your hamstring, even your legs and thighs. And some of these poses are great as well for helping you get into your splits. Now we're going to place our knees down and our next pose is that we're going to try to open up our knees wide so they are the edge of the mat right a little bit off the mat and then you're going to slowly try to sink your hips down right so whatever feels comfortable for you and your body as we get into this frog pose the idea is to align my knees and my ankles so they're in like a 90 degree angle or straight, straight angle, straight line. And then do the same thing for my left and my right. So that kind of like a frog. You can stay here if this is too intense. Um, the more you kind of sink in it, the deeper the stretch is here. Or if you want to kind of intensify, you can put your forearms down again and really sink your body into the stretch. Right. Um, making sure our hips aren't too back or too forward, right? And just to sit right on top of it in between the intercessors and holding that for three. Walk our hands back down and lift up and get into the tabletop where our wrist is over our shoulders and bring up our knees about hip width apart. All right, and then doing some cat and cows, you can do them whenever in the practice. I usually like to do them in the beginning, but I feel like my back needs some warming up. So lifting my tailbone up, opening up my chest into cow pose, and then tilting my tailbone down, concaving my chest into cat pose. Back will sink up and open up my chest. And then doing the reverse again, navel to spine, concave and into cat. So just shaking that out. And then we're gonna get into a seated position. <coughs> right. Maybe lifting up the low booty meat so that you can feel very seated and grounded. I right, as we do seated forward fold. So legs parallel, lifting our body up, engaging that core, engaging that spine in the crown of our head, and then forward folding, right? Not hunching at the back. And seeing if we can grab our feet, our toes, our calves, our ankles, whichever feels comfortable in your body as we're looking down chest, chin to Nose. No, chin to knees. Of course, you want to just intensify the stretch. You can always place your hands at your feet and really get in that pull and that stretch. I'm going to hold this for three, two, 
and one. Filling that and releasing that, right? We're gonna do the same thing now by having one foot bent or angled. So we're gonna angle our right leg so that our bottom of our feet is in our thigh. And then we're gonna again lift and forward fold here. And holding that for three, two, And one, releasing that. And then the next part. Again, the next leg, lift it up and over. Put three. And just bring an awareness that one side is different from the other. And sometimes, I know for me, it feels very drastic. And so I can just give my body grace and just work on those sides a little bit more, who may be a little bit more love. Three, two, and one. All right, releasing that. And so now we're gonna actually get into a split, right? If you don't want to, then maybe too much, but I feel like we've waken up our thighs and everything enough. And so, just get into it, right? So you can begin by Placing this, going into a half split, right? So you're kind of in this low lunge, and then you're going to walk your hips back, straighten up that front leg, right? And then slowly just scoot that front leg, that back leg down into a split. And so, of course, if you need blocks to help, if you're kind of like floating and you want that block to help, then by all means you can do so. But if you kind of feel that like you're able to bring yourself closer to the ground and release the blocks, use your hands to really help you and guide you down. All right, making sure that again, that we are sitting in the center of this, right? We're not leaning to one side or the other side, like what people used to do in cheerleading. I mean, I personally wasn't splitting like this in cheerleading, but whatever, all right? And so, just really sitting in that split, all right? Having the front leg elongated, if you need to bend that knee to kind of release that tension, you can do so, use the block, as well as having the back all the front and everything down, and really sitting into this split, right? And so we can hold it and breathing into these tight areas. For three, two, and one. And so if you want to take that challenge, you can do the sweeping split by placing your forearms down, chest to thigh, and then nose to knee. And holding this for three. Two and one. And if you want to challenge yourself more, you can practice lifting up. Ooh, I am not there yet, but I'm getting there. Right. So to safely get out, you can lift up. Use your arms to lift your body up, bringing that, bringing that back knee up into, up to the ground, back into that half split, lifting back up into that low lunge, and then. Bringing it back down to tabletops. So do the same thing for the left, right? And once again, get into that low lunge, scooting back into the half split, and then just kind of scooting it into that split pose, right? Same thing, right? One side may be tied at the other, so you're gonna block to help alleviate that. Ooh, it's amazing. All right, but if you wanna get that challenge, then go ahead, sit into that split, right? Not leaning one side or the other. And then holding this for three, two, and one. And then leaning forward if you want to challenge yourself and get to that sleeping split for three, two, and one. Again. To lift up, yeah, I'm not there yet for this leg, but working on it. But constantly just bringing awareness to your body, breathing into areas that may be tight, right? Whew. And so now bringing that back knee up, sliding up this front leg into that half split, and then, ooh, then into that low lunge. And now, safely into tabletop. Okay. 
So we are now getting into the last pose. Safely get into your butts. Lean in on your back. I'm kind of doing some window wipers. I right, count releasing those stretches. All right, bringing your knees to one side and to the other side. Right. Bringing knee to chest, really giving yourself a nice hug, squeezing into that ball. All right. Really shaking out those legs and stretching them forward. And now Shavasana pose. Shavasana, corpse pose. And just resting. Allowing yourself to sink with every breath. Have your fingers naturally curl and your feet naturally fall. Give your fingers tension, falling your face, in between your eyebrows, and to surrender to your mat. And being grateful for making it all the night. If you have more time to stay here, then I encourage you to rest. If not, then start making your way up. Or first, giving yourself small movements in the back. Turn to one side or the other. Using your arm to help you lift up. Now we make our way into a seated position. Placing our hands at palm center if that is comfortable to you. And the light in me, acknowledge the light in you. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. <laughs> 